Hello there and welcome to this video on the BRK Ghost. In our previous video we took a fully functioning complete rifle and broke it down into individual components. In this video we're going to be taking those components and rebuilding them into a complete rifle. Before we get started on that though, on your screen now will be a complete list of all the tools that we're going to use in order to carry out this process. It includes all the allen key sizes, as well as spanner sizes, and finally any BRK specific tooling required to complete the job. Next thing I want to mention is that this particular rifle is a Sub-12 2.2 Compact Ghost, although the information in this video will also be relevant to the FAC models and also the different calibers. And finally, all the O-rings on this rifle have been replaced off camera just to save us a little bit of time. If you require any O-rings for your Ghost, please contact BRK directly and they'll be happy to supply you with a full O-ring kit for the rifle. With that all said and done, we can begin on the reassembly process. The first thing we'll do is install the trigger. So to begin with, we'll take our trigger linkage here and whilst pushing it all the way forward, we'll lightly compress this spring at the back here and then hook that over the rear of the block like so. With that done, we can take our plastic cover piece and get that slid over the trigger linkage. It does have a small channel that it runs in, so just get that lined up and push it through. It should finish flush with the end of the block here. With that done, we can get the trigger blade installed. To begin with, we'll take our trigger assembly here and add the small spring and brass cup into this hole here, like so. With that installed, we can take our block and whilst getting this hole in the side of the trigger assembly lined up, with this hole in the block, we'll get those two pieces mated together and then we'll add our trigger pin, so this piece here. It may take a little bit of wiggling to get everything lined up, but once it goes together, it should push in fairly easily. With that done, we can get the trigger plate and the safety installed into the side. But with that lined up, we can take the block and then just push the safety through. Now to get it installed, you may have to wiggle the trigger a little just to get everything pushed into place. With that done, we can install the two securing screws and get those done up using a two millimeter Allen key. Last thing to do is just check that the trigger is functioning. So if we pull the trigger here, we should see this brass piece at the back here start to move. So our one's working and we can move on to the next step. Next thing we'll do is get the bottom rail and the fill valve installed into the rifle. First up, we'll take our one-way valve here and add a small amount of silicon grease to the O-ring around the base of the piece. Next, we'll take our fill valve and get that installed like so, with the O-ring towards the bottom of the unit. With that pushed in, we'll make sure our doughty washer is installed then we can get this screwed into the bottom of the block. Getting it done up by hand first, then coming through with a deep 10mm socket to tighten it down. With that done, we can add the bottom rail and then the three securing screws. Tightening those down with a 3mm Allen key. As you tighten those down, just use your fingers to feel either side of the bottom rail to make sure it's aligned correctly. With that done, we can add our dust cap, just so it doesn't get lost. Next, we'll rebuild the valve of the rifle. So we have two valves here. The one at the top here is the FAC one. The one at the bottom here is the Sub-12 one. Again, your one might look a little different from the ones shown in the video, although they go together in exactly the same way. First thing we'll do is take this O-ring here, and just add a small amount of silicon grease to it. Then we can get that dropped into the back housing here. Just make sure that, that gets seated correctly. Then we can add this small back cap to it, pushing that in nice and gently. With that done, we can take the front half of the housing, add a small amount of silicon grease to our valve pin here, and then get that pushed through the housing. With that done, we can add the spring to the back of the valve and then get the two halves joined. As you join the two halves, just make sure you have the cutout in the ring aligned with the cutout on the valve body. 
With that done, we can push them together, then rotate the ring round to lock the two pieces together. The FAC valve goes together in a very similar way. First, we're going to add a small amount of silicon grease to both O-rings, so the one at the back and the one at the front. Next thing we'll do is get that installed into the front of the housing there. Then we'll add the valve return spring over the O-ring nice and carefully. And then again, aligning the ring with the cutout in the side of the valve body, we'll get the two halves pushed together. Next, we can misalign the ring so that it locks itself into place. Then we can just take both the valves and make sure we can push the ends so that we know they're functioning correctly, which these two seem to be. Next, we'll install the valve body back into the rifle. First thing we'll do is take the valve body and just add a small amount of silicon grease to all three O-rings around the outside. Just a small amount will do us, wiping off the excess with our fingers. Next, we'll align the hole in the top of the valve with the top of the block. So the valve should go in this orientation. Next, we'll get that pushed in, nice and gently making sure not to damage any of the O-rings as we push the valve into the block. At this stage, what we can do is take a set of snap ring pliers, lightly grip either side of the valve, and just gently rotate it until it falls into the cutouts in the block, like so. With that done, we can take our two O-rings, Add a small amount of silicon grease to each of them, then install those over the valve. So we have one small one which seals against the valve body here. And then we have a larger one, this one here, which seals against the outside. Pushing them gently into place with an allen key or something similar. Then we can add the retention nut and do that up by hand. Once we've got it in as far as we can by hand, we'll bring back our valve removal tool and get the nut screwed in all the way. We can tighten that up using a 19mm spanner. And again, if you didn't have the valve removal tool, you could just use a set of snap ring pliers. Next thing we'll do is rebuild the regulator. First thing I want to show you is the regulator piston. So as you can see there, we have eight Belleville washers on the regulator piston. They're cupped in pairs in alternating groups. So hopefully you can see that and hopefully you can copy that if you did end up taking your Belleville washers off the regulator piston. I will mention that if you need to remove the Belvilles for any reason or when you reinstall them, it is advisable to remove this end O-ring as when you take your Belvilles off or put them back on, it is possible to pinch or nick the O-ring. So just be aware of that. But as we've replaced all the O-rings off camera, that's some, not something that we need to worry about. The next thing we'll do is put some silicon grease around both of these O-rings here. Just a small amount will do us, wiping off the excess with our fingers. Next thing we'll do is take our white sealing disc, this piece here, and put that on top of the regulator piston. Get it nice and aligned with the top, and then bring back our rig body and get that installed into the bottom. As you push this in, just take a look from the top and make sure that you're not pinching the white sealing disc as you install the regulator piston. But there we have it there. Next up, we can take our adjuster screw, add a small amount of silicon grease to both these O-rings here. With that done, we can get that installed into the regulator body. Then we can get it done up the final bit with just a flat bladed screwdriver. We want to go in until we feel the adjuster screw lightly stop there. Then we can back it out about a turn. We'll adjust the final set pressure of the regulator when the rifle's all built up. Next, we'll add a small amount of silicon grease to these three external O-rings here. With that done, we'll install the regulator body into our rig removal tool and get that done into the body of the rifle. Next thing we can do is get the top rail, the cocking linkage and the cocking arm installed onto the rifle. First thing we need to do though is decide which side we want our cocking arm to be on. It can be installed on the left or the right hand side. 
Now I always prefer mine on the right hand side, so that's where I'm going to be installing it. So we take our cocking arm here, and we also take our cocking linkage, then insert the cocking arm into the right side of the assembly. And from the other side, we come through and install the screw into the second hole down, so this one here. Next, we can use a flat bladed screwdriver to do that up nice and tightly. Next thing we'll do is get the cocking handle installed. To do that, we're going to drop the bolt through the hole and then get the cocking handle tightened onto it. Next up, we're going to add a small amount of molly grease to all the moving surfaces. So first up, we'll take our block and just add some in this groove here. Just a small amount will do us. Now you don't need loads, this isn't a high wear application, it just makes the bolt feel a lot nicer as you pull it backwards and forwards. With that done, we'll take back the block and add our cocking linkage to it. Getting that dropped in to the groove there, just making sure everything lines up as you push it on. There it is there. The next thing we'll do is just add a little more molly grease to this hole here. Just a small amount will do us. Then we can add a little more to this top rail here. Next thing we'll do is take our bush, get that installed into that hole there, and then get the top rail installed over it. Next up, we can add our securing screws. Now the two at the front and the two at the back of the block are M4 by 16, whereas the two in the middle are M4 by 20. Getting those done up with a three millimeter Allen key. Now we're not gonna be doing them up tight just yet. We're gonna be getting them all started. Then we'll tighten them up at a later date. With that done, we can add our two longer ones to the middle, just aligning the cocking arm with the hole there, then getting that done up with a three millimeter Allen key. With that done, on the other side, we can add our cover plate. Now this does have an orientation. We have this little cup, which needs to be hooked in from this side. Next, before we move on, we can just take a look at the top rail and make sure it's aligned with the top there. So if it's misaligned at all, you can loosen off the screws and then get them tightened up when you've got everything aligned. So what we need to do is make sure that the top rail is following the block and there's not a bigger gap one side than the other. Once we're happy, we can tighten all the bolts down. And once we're done, just make sure the cocking arm flows backwards and forwards nice and smoothly. Next up, we'll get the rear block reassembled. The rear block consists of the butt piece and the hammer housing. To begin with, we'll reinstall the hammer. So to do that, we'll take our hammer, slide that into this hole of the hammer housing. And there's a little trick to getting the cocking dog installed on the hammer. So the cocking dog is installed this way in the rifle. So with the two grub screws pointing towards the muzzle end of the barrel. We're gonna hold that by the use of some pin nose pliers. Then I'm gonna take my pinky and gently hold the hammer in position whilst we slide the cocking dog into the dovetail on the hammer, like so. Next thing we're gonna do is push it all the way to the back. So we've pushed the cocking dog against the hammer all the way back. Then we're gonna tighten the two securing grub screws using a two millimeter Allen key. There we have it. Next thing we'll do is get this bush installed into the back. So this bush does have a small slot in the top of it, and this slot needs to be aligned with the top of the block. Like so. With that in, we can get the three securing screws installed. Now what I like to do with these is get all three started before doing any one up tight. And these can be tightened using a two and a half mil Allen key. With that done, we'll take our hammer spring and just chuck that in the back of the block for now, making sure it's lined up with the hammer and flows into the back of the hammer. 
Next up we'll assemble the power wheel assembly. To do that we'll take this worm shaft here, add this piece to the shaft. Now this piece here does have a number of dimples which needs to be aligned with the back of the rifle. With that done we can push that over and then get the two holes, so this one here and this one here aligned with the track that we're going to install some ball bearings into. So there are four ball bearings in total with two being installed on either side. Like so. And then whilst holding the ball bearings in place we can get the other side installed. Next up we'll add our power wheel. So getting the writing aligned with the right side. So this would be upside down in the rifle whereas this is the correct orientation. Get that pushed over and then we can install this small dog pointed grub screw into this hole here. Next thing we'll do is just add a small amount of molly grease to this side of the power wheel, so the dimples for the ball bearing, and also just a small amount to the shaft. You can get some in the ball bearing track there as well. I will mention at this stage that all five ball bearings in this assembly are three millimeter ball bearings. So if you lose any one of them, they're just three mil ball bearings. With that done, we can put that into the back of the hammer housing with the ball bearing in the top aligned with the top of the block. And my rifle came with a power washer, so I've got that installed on the back there. The last thing we can do is add the butt piece to the back. Now the butt piece does feature a ball bearing in the bottom here, and we are just going to add a small amount of molly grease to this area here. We don't want a lot in here, we just want a small amount. If too much is applied, what will happen is you'll just get a greasy finger if you end up needing to adjust the power. Next up we can drop the four securing screws in. Now this again is a sub-12 rifle, so we're going to be putting two regular screws in, and then the final one will be a three-pin anti-tamper screw. I will mention at this stage here, the three in the top are M4 by 20, whereas the one on the bottom, or the one that goes in the middle here, is slightly longer at M4 by 24. We can get these tightened with a three millimeter Allen key. with the final bolt being tightened using our three pin tool. Now before we do these up tight, we are just going to check that the power wheel rotates backwards and forwards nice and freely. If it's tight at this stage, you may need to go back in and have a little adjust with the bush that we put in at the back of the hammer housing. The last thing we can do is add our butt piece. To do that, we're gonna be putting the small square nut in the back of the unit, like so, then we can drop our butt piece over the top, then do that up using a 3mm Allen key. The butt piece is adjustable, so we can slide it where we want it, and then tighten the screw up. Next thing we'll do is get the rear block mated to the main block of the rifle. First thing we're going to do is take our small 2mm pin, this one here, and get that put through the brass section of the trigger. Just get that pushed into place and keep a close eye on it so it doesn't get lost. Next thing we'll do is take this pin here and get that put through this hole here. Next thing we'll do is rock the block over on its side, making sure both the pin for the cocking dog and the pin for the trigger have stayed in place. Next we're going to take our rear block and slide that over the top rail. Next we can rock the block over and get this grub screw installed into the side of the block. This will just keep everything in place. With that done we can install the four securing screws into the top rail. So these are M4 by 16. With all the screws installed but not tight, just make sure the cocking arm opens and closes without much resistance. Then we can go through and tighten the screws in pairs, 
and just keep checking the cocking arm to make sure it's not being pinched by anything. And there we have it. If your cocking arm does start to get stiff, you can loosen the other sets of screws on the top rail and with everything lined up, just move from back to front, tighten them the screws one set at a time. Next, we can take our trigger cassette, this piece here, and get that dropped into the bottom of the block. To get this installed, you may have to pull the trigger, give it a little wiggle in order for it to seat correctly. Once it's seated, we can take the two securing screws and get those installed in the side. With that done, we can cock the rifle and make sure everything is working and that the rifle fires. So this one does and it feels good. Next up, we're gonna go ahead and install the rest of the pieces onto the block. So we have the top rail, the cheek piece, the gauges, and finally the grip. First thing we'll do is install the gauges. Before the gauges go on though, we're just gonna make sure they have the doughty washer installed onto the base of the threads. With that done, we can screw the gauges in. This one is just a plain brocock one, and this one goes on this side to designate the bottle pressure. With that done, we can get that tightened up using a 22 mm spanner. And with it tight, we'll put the gauge cover over. Next, we can flip the block and do the same on the other side. This gauge has humor written on it, and this gauge goes on this side as it designates the regulator pressure. Next up, we'll install the top rail. Now the top rail does have an alignment arrow. So if we look at the front of it, we can see an arrow there, and that's supposed to be pointing towards the front or the muzzle end of the block. We can get that slid over. And then getting it aligned where we need it to be. Once we're happy with the position, we can tighten down the four securing screws using a three millimeter Allen key. Next, we'll slide on the cheek piece. So to get the cheek piece on, we just need to slide it on from the back on our preferred side. When it's in position, we're gonna be doing that up using a two and a half mil Allen key. With that done, the last thing we'll put back is the grip. So to begin with, we'll take our little spacer piece here and get that hooked into the block. It does have two round cutouts on the bottom and they align with the two round cutouts in the block. So get that pushed over and then slid back. Next, we'll take our grip and drop that over the top there. Then do the screw up using a four millimeter Allen key. Now, as I said in the disassembly, this is an AK pattern grip. So if you replace your grip, just make sure you get an AK one to replace it. With that installed, we can take our little spacer piece here and get that dropped into the back. You could also leave this out if you don't want it in there. The final thing to do before we repressurize the rifle is install the barrel, shroud and pellet probe. To begin with, we'll install the barrel. To do that, we line up this dimple in the side of the barrel with this hole in the side of the block. With that in a rough alignment, we can take our barrel and install that into the front of the block. When we get to about here, it's easiest just to give the barrel a little wiggle to help it pass the first O-ring. Then we can just push it through the block, being nice and careful. And then as we get to the rear of the block, again, just give it a little wiggle to align it with the back there. With that done, we can take the grub screw out in the side and make sure that we're lined up on our flap. Once we're happy, we can take our grub screw, install it, and then do that up nice and tightly with a three millimeter Allen key. Here we have it. Next thing we'll do is install the pellet probe. To do that, we're gonna cock the rifle. Then we're gonna take our pellet probe and push that in from the back. Now this is a 2-2 probe, so it is a pin probe. However, if you have a 177 rifle, you will need to make sure that the hole is lined up in the bottom of the probe so that it's aligned with the transfer port when it's installed in the rifle. We don't need to worry about that for the pin probes though. And they can just be pushed in nice and easily. And then we can get our securing screw installed over the top. That's done up with a two millimeter Allen key. With that done, we can decock the rifle.
just to show you. This hole in the back is where we install our pallet probe. Next thing we'll do is get the shroud installed onto the barrel. The first thing we'll do is take our shroud end support and stripper and install the brass piece into the end there. With that in place we can take a 2mm allen key and do up the locking grub screws. The last thing we'll do is add the large o-ring over the end there. And finally just add a small amount of silicon grease to the o-ring. Next thing we'll do is take our shroud rear support, this piece here, and locate the two slots in either side. So these need to be aligned down. And what we're going to do is take our block, get this shroud support slid over the barrel, then secured using the two short grub screws in the top of the piece there. Before we do these grub screws up tight, we need to make sure there's a small gap between the back support and the front of the block. The gap wants to be about the thickness of a business card, and this will just help stop vibrations travelling from the block to the shroud. And lastly, just make sure that this back piece is rotated evenly, so that the same amount of grub screw is showing on both sides. With that done, we can screw our stripper onto the front of the barrel. Getting that done up about hand tight. Next thing we'll do is add our carbon fibre shroud. Before that goes on though, I am just going to add a small amount of silicon grease to this o-ring around the shroud to pull. With that done, we'll locate the holes in the bottom of the shroud and align with them with the bottom and then get that slid over. Finally, we'll secure that using the two long grub screws. Doing those up with a two and a half mil Allen key. The final thing for us to do is to add our bottle and repressurize the rifle. So to do that, we're just going to screw the bottle onto the bottle adapter. With that done, if we take a look on this side of the rifle, we can see we've got about 170 bar in the bottle, whereas on this side, our regulator is reading zero, so we need to reset our reg pressure. We do that by adjusting the reg adjuster screw in the front of the rifle there. So hopefully in the body there, you see an aluminium housing and a brass adjuster screw. We need to do this with the use of a flat bladed screwdriver. To make adjusting the regulator a little easier, I've got myself a little ratchet with a flat bladed screwdriver head installed in the end. To increase reg pressure, we need to turn the adjuster screw counterclockwise. Now, I will mention that you cannot adjust this regulator down or clockwise whilst the rifle is pressurized. To adjust the regulator down, you need to fully depressurize the rifle, adjust the regulator down, then repressurize the rifle, and fine adjust outwards. So, to make that clear, you can adjust the regulator up under pressure no problem, however you cannot adjust it down under pressure. With that said, we can take our little tool and adjust the regulator pressure. This rifle was set to about 80 bar when we first took it apart, so that's what we're going to be resetting it to. And there we have it. The rifle has been adjusted to just over 80 bar, what I'm going to do now is put a few dry fires through the rifle and make sure that the reg pressure doesn't dramatically change when it settles. And after about a dozen or so dry fires, the regulator has settled to bang on 80 bar, exactly where we wanted it. So what I'm going to do now is mark the gauge and leave the rifle overnight to make sure that there's no leaks. Although as this is a fairly new rifle with all new O-rings in it, I'm fairly confident that we won't have a problem. So we're going to end this video here. With that all said, thank you for watching. I hope it's been helpful and we'll see you in the next one.